My name is Ty. I am an international massage therapist. I travel the world for clients, contracts, and everything in between. Today, we're going to be talking about dietary recommendations for the post-op industry. Now, before we get started and we get too far, let's discuss the obvious that I am not skinny. So what makes me qualified to do this video? I'm a walking anatomical nerd. I super love the body. I've been doing this for 15 plus years. I've taken care of over 18,000 clients. 18,792 to be exact, but you know, who's counting? And more importantly, I'm not getting surgery. You are. So we can skip past the thoughts of, she's not skinny, why should I listen to her? Because I know what I'm talking about. Skinny isn't really like a personal goal of mine. Happy is. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm super happy. Full of joy. All of it. So let's get started. Its intentions is to nourish the fat transfers to help for a better cell survival. And while the approaches are similar, the goals are completely different. So the deliverance is different. Let's get back to this food, AKA fuel. You're gonna start by cleaning out your fridge and your cupboards first. Look at all the expiration dates. If it's old, toss it. I don't care how much is left. Like things start to expire and they become toxic, even if they still look and taste just fine. Next, you're going to go to the grocery store and shop the perimeters. If something does not need an electrical source to sustain or stay fresh, or if it can't go bad, then you shouldn't be buying it. If it can survive on shelves and has a shelf life, then it's going to linger and survive inside of you too and not in a good way. You can go inside the store for small things that you need to supplement your diet, maybe like peanut butter or nuts, but keep it minimal and basic. Right. Now. You're gonna follow a keto diet for the next six to eight weeks. Instead of skipping meals, if you just don't have an appetite and you can't bring yourself to eat, then take a multivitamin in place of that meal instead of skipping altogether. Next, you're gonna minimize carbs, sodium, and processed food. Carbs, they cause like new fat cells to grow and for fat cells to divide and multiply in like a really bad way too. Sodium will cause swelling to retain and it takes long for inflammation to go down. It causes your body to like hold on to water weight that it doesn't really need. And then processed foods, they just confuse the body and take forever to break down. Next, never skip breakfast, like ever. At the beginning of each week, make smoothies and detox juices and mason jars, and then leave them in the fridge. Your newly cleaned out, freshly like healthified fridge. Is that a word? No, I'm gonna use it anyways. We're gonna keep that healthified. And then you can take them with you on the go. If you aren't hungry or you're like really super pressed for time, they come in handy. You wanna have like six small meals, that's the goal. Six, which way is it going? Am I going the right way? Six small meals and then three snacks in between so, daily. Some examples of some good clean snacks, right? In between meal snacks. You have hummus and bell peppers, olives. You do olives and cheese too. A side salad. Apples and almond butter, sprouts, peanut butter, and rice cakes, all in one. Avocados and tomatoes, raw nuts, sliced coconut and pineapples, celery, black bean dip, caper, yogurt and berries, sliced cucumbers, and hot sauce. Well, not together, those are, those are separate. Time for plan B. Your home and your fridge should already be prepped. If not, do that now. You wanna feed those fats with healthy fats. In plan B, the wrong kind of fats can cause the fat cells to like split and divide because of the nature of how fat cells are. And then it'll wind up replacing the fat cells in the areas that just got removed. Instead, you're gonna nourish the transplanted fat cells with healthy fats. These are going to include oils like olive oil, butter, not like margarine or vegetable oil, we're gonna toss those out. And coconut oil, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, peanut butter, olives, ground flaxseed and fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, trout, herring, 
not in a cup. Yogurt, oats, tofu, and edamame. Lean beef, lean pork, duck, bacon, spirulina, avocados, whole eggs, whole milk, ice cream, cheese, dark chocolate, chia seeds, butter, coconuts, and then seeds like sunflower and pumpkin seeds, but totally unsalted. Next up on the list is maintenance and cravings. I believe giving up to cravings before 3 p.m. and in moderation. Your metabolism like nose dies after 3 p.m. So if you have a craving that you just can't shake, that does not fit into plan A and totally doesn't fit into plan B, do it sparingly before 3 p.m. Now, if you decide to get extra rounds, that's totally fine, but it should be out of desire and not out of necessity. You shouldn't have to get extra rounds because you didn't plan accordingly. For these results to sustain long-term, it has to be a part of a lifestyle shift. You have to be willing to let go of the old you, and let the old you die to embrace the new you so your results can live. Lifestyle shifts include letting go of old habits, bad habits, and bad decisions, or let's call them questionable decisions. Like things that we do because we no longer have parents standing over top of us telling us no, them things. So what are some bad habits that we need to let go of as a part of our maintenance plan? Eating too late and snacking, eating too much, not eating enough or eating often enough, not eating enough color in our diet. Like when you look down at your plate, is it colorful? The vitamins are in the color. Skipping meals, drinking too much alcohol, is water I promise eating too many carbs and then adding too much salt mm. oh, that was so good. it's water as you start to acknowledge your old bad habits you'll mentally and physically start to shift into your new habits they take 21 days to create at least that's what I heard see if you can stick this out like if you believed in Santa Claus for 10 years, you, you can totally do this for like 21 days. And you'll start to hold yourself accountable to the things that you say that you want and start to protect the results that you've totally already invested in. This will be the premise for a great maintenance plan. Your ability to maintain these results come from coming up with a game plan, mentally committing to this game plan, sharing your goals and your game plan with others around you that you care about and they care about you too executing your plan, reassessing every week on how you did, and then coming up with ways of how you can get better, and then allowing yourself to make some mistakes because we're human, right? Forgive yourself for the old mistakes that you may have made in the past, and then give yourself permission to enjoy these new results. This allows you to have some type of balance to keep going because we're not robots. Lastly, we're gonna end with balance. What does that actually look like? Well, here's an example. Balance for a post-op regimen to maintaining your results could be working out four days a week and then following your plan three days a week. This is like later on down the line, past your eight weeks. Once you've committed, you got to your finish line and then you want to keep going to maintain the results, create some balance. Oops. Yes, I totally said working out because I'll say it now. I'll say it later, I'll say it a thousand times in the future, and then 10,000 times in the past, plastic surgery is not a solution for weight loss. It's a compliment. Results are maintained by including some form of heart pumping movement, but we'll get to that in like a totally different video. When it comes to your hydration and your water intake, instead of go from drinking a gallon of water a day every single day, drink a gallon of water a day five days a week, and then maybe half a gallon of water a day for two days out of that week. <laughs> when it comes to like cheat meals, cause like a lot of times we, we love to treat yourself. <laughs> I think I watch too much TV. No, usually TV watches me. That was so subliminal. But instead of having an entire cheat day, switch, maintain some balance. You don't wanna jack up your results because you're living your best life. Have one cheat meal and then do it on a day that you worked out.
it'll help balance it out some. Toss in some meditation. Nam yo ho wen ye kyo. Make some you time, some unapologetic you time. Oh my gosh, I recently got obsessed with these. They have super changed my life. Affirmations. Like, so the way that I use affirmations, start off by just listening to them and then repeat them in your head and then say them out loud. It just does something to like detox your mind mentally. It just brightens up your psyche. These are all great suggestions for maintaining balance and then holding on to your results for the long haul. So let's recap, shall we? You're gonna clean out your fridge and your cupboards, toss it all out. I don't care how much is left. You're gonna contact your doctor and do a checkup, look over, follow up situation. You're gonna pick your post-op plan, either plan A or plan B. Remember plan A is clean, squeaky clean, like keto clean. Plan B is not. <laughs> you are feeding your fat with like super healthy fats and it cannot be keto at all. Design a maintenance plan that you can stick to, that works for you, and then share with other people so they can help hold you accountable too. At the end of each week, assess, see how you did. Make some tweaks, figure out what's working for you and what's not. I hope you super enjoyed this video. I had just a little bit too much fun making it. <laughs> and make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, Perfectly Thai. <laughs> and then the Facebook group, oh my gosh, I teach on a regular basis for free all of this stuff that will help get you to the finish line much faster all the things that they don't tell you after surgery i swear you get more information of what to do what not to do how to take care of yourself after getting a tattoo than you do when you get a new body it's okay i got you come join us in the free facebook forum the biggest free facebook forum for post-op it is called time out post-op corner I super hope you enjoyed this video don't be good today when you were so destined to be great